When I was initially looking into this slate for MLB DFS, it was a slate where the only super, super high strikeout guy on it was Shohei Otani. Otani was facing the Yankees, tough matchup, but great pitcher. But with last night's postponement, the Yankees and Angels doing a doubleheader for today, which means Otani is no longer on the slate. So we get a, a weird situation we don't often get for DFS, where it's a decently sized slate, but it's not a high strikeout slate. A lot of the best pitchers for tonight are guys who don't get a lot of strikeouts. And honestly, for me, I find that to be kind of fun because I typically have to ignore good pitchers who don't get a lot of strikeouts because we need strikeouts for DFS. Tonight, it's a bit different, and I'm pretty excited about that. So we're going to dive on in, let you know who stands out after accounting for the low strikeout nature of this slate, and get you set to win some money on Thursday night. Welcome on into the solo shop. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com, here to break down Thursday's seven-game main slate with lock set for 6.40 p.m. Eastern for tonight. Again, lock is at 6.40 p.m. Eastern, so get those lineups in early to get them submitted for tonight. There is just one rain spot on the slate for today. That is in Baltimore for the Orioles and the Mariners. It should leave around first pitch, but check back on the timing of that if you want either of those teams just to, to see when the rain does roll out. I do like one of the teams in that game from a stacking perspective, so check back on that one later. We'll break down the pitching preview and all of that for today in just one second. But first, a quick reminder to make sure you are subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. We are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, you name it, you can find us there. And if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well. The NBA Finals are here, and so is your chance to score big on FanDuel Sportsbook. Throughout the NBA Finals, FanDuel is giving new customers $200 in free bets, guaranteed, when you place your first $5 bet. Bet the money line, point spread, player props, and so much more. Plus, you can combine your bets for an even bigger payday with a same-game parlay. If you haven't tried FanDuel, now is the perfect time to give it a shot because the only thing sweeter than watching the finals is cashing in on all the action. Make every game feel like Game 7 with FanDuel Sportsbook. FanDuel, official partner of the NBA, must be 21-plus and in select states. First online real money wager of at least $5. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable free bet that expires 14 days after receipt. See full terms at FanDuel.com sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WHIP-IT. In Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. In Tennessee, call the red line at 1-800-889-9789. In West Virginia, 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Pitching preview for this Thursday main slate, Sandy Alcantara is that guy I was talking about before. High, uh, not a high strikeout guy, but amazing pitcher. He is the highest salaried pitcher on FanDuel for tonight, checking in at $11,000. Sean Manaya is 10-2. Tony Gonsolin is 98. Adrian Hauser, 91. Jordan Lyles, 9,000 with Taiwan Walker, Chris Flexen, and Matthew Liberatore as the others at $8,000 or higher. And I think this is a fun slate where we do have a lot of guys who – wouldn't typically be in play because of the low strikeout nature of the slate. The one guy who can get a hefty number of strikeouts and is decent enough as a pitcher to like still potentially be above Alcantara is Sean Manaya. And I've been on Manaya a lot recently, and it definitely has not worked out always, but he has upside. And I like his situation for today. So I'm going to be back on him once again. We got Manaya facing the Brewers. They have struggled against lefties so far this year with a 73 WRC plus, a 115 ISO, and a 23% strikeout rate. The low power numbers are the big thing. The low ISO, the low WRC plus, because Manaya is struggling there. The most relevant sample for him is his past five starts with his velocity increasing. And in that time, his hard hit rate allowed is 48%. That's why he's led up three plus earned runs in all of those games. It's a bit less of a concern against the Brewers with their lack of power. The strikeouts have been there for Manaya. He has a 27% strikeout rate in those five starts. He had 12 strikeouts in one, eight in another, which means even when he's letting up earned runs, 
he's still getting you FanDuel points to offset those. Plus, we see Mania still complete six plus innings in all those games. Six plus innings in five straight, 27% strikeout rate. Even if you let us some earned runs, that's still a pretty good output for FanDuel. We've seen Mania pitch into the seventh three separate times. He's finished the seventh twice. So I think he is a good floor because of these things, despite the runs he has allowed. I have Mania projected for 6.8 strikeouts for tonight. That is the top number on the slate. I will be in on him once again. Sean Mania to me, very much worthwhile, despite the rough results he has had thus far. Now, Sandy Alcantara hasn't had a huge strikeout rate this year. I'm not sure if he will get one either, given how lefty heavy the Giants are for tonight. I think that uh, they could put the ball in play quite a bit, but I do still think that Alcantara is firmly in play here. And part of that is what we discussed. It is the slate. With Otani being taken off the slate, it's basically just Mania in terms of guys who do get a lot of strikeouts available. And, you know, some of the guys who do get strikeouts are in low strikeout spots against low strikeout opponents, or they've got shaky pitch counts. Alcantara doesn't have that issue. He has gone 100, 115, and 108 pitches across his past three starts. He went eight plus innings in all those. I was marveling at Minaya going six plus innings, five separate times. This dude's done eight plus innings three times in a row. And we saw him go seven the start before that. He's doing that due to length, Alcantara is, but he's also really freaking good. He has a 34% fly ball rate allowed, a 36% hard hit rate, that's while getting enough strikeouts. I wouldn't be surprised if his strikeout rate does go up. His swinging strike rate is 13.8%. His CSW percentage, which includes called strikes, that's not super high. So that's why I'm not expecting the strikeout rate to increase. But Alcantara can get whiffs. And we saw that last time out where he had 14 freaking strikeouts on the road against Atlanta. Th- that was his second straight time facing them as well. I'm not expecting 14 strikeouts here uh, because his strikeout rate does go down to 22% against lefties versus 27% against righties. And I'd expect the Giants to have only three righties in their lineup for tonight. But the effectiveness and the length are good enough to boost Alcantara way up for me. If this were a higher strikeout slate, maybe you're not willing to pay $11,000 to get Alcantara in your lineup, but I am. Uh, On this specific slate, I love the safety. I love the upside combo. Not as flashy as Mania, uh, so i probably give the, the edge to Mania for tournaments, but for cash games, I'm going to go Alcantara. I'm going to feel good about it, and I will use him in tournaments as well. Our top value for tonight at pitcher is actually going to be in that exact same game as Alcantara. That's Alex Wood facing off with the Marlins, and the Marlins are a high strikeout team. They have a 30% strikeout rate on their current active roster against lefties this year, and that's probably going to come down. You don't expect a 30% mark for a full season, but it will likely remain high even as it does decrease. Plus, they have just a 78 WRC plus against lefties with a 112 ISO. It is a great matchup for Wood. Now, Wood's results have not been good across his nine starts. He has a 4.81 ERA, but his peripherals are are a lot better. He has a 24% strikeout rate, letting up just a 24% fly ball rate. He did let up five earned runs in a couple different starts, which are really dragging down his results-based numbers. Wood can get some strikeouts. He's in a great spot to get them for tonight. And I've actually got Wood projected for 6.2 strikeouts tonight. That ranks second behind Minaya, and it's actually ahead of Alcantara. In big part, because of the respective matchups. Straight up, I prefer Alcantara over Wood, but big discrepancy in matchup for these two guys. So I like Alcantara more, despite the fact I have a higher strikeout projection for Wood. But I think I see enough in Wood where I actually will use him tonight. I don't tend to use uh, the value plays every night. I will tonight. I think that uh, I think that he gives me enough to feel good about that. And Wood allows me to load up at Coors Field, which is something I definitely want to do for today. Speaking of that, let's dive into our stacks. And our top two stacks are at Coors Field. I think you can make it work with Manaya, and you can make it work as long as you have a value stack with Alcantara. So keep that in mind. I'll talk about some value hitters later on. Let's start here with the Braves. They are at Coors Field. Um, it's not an elite matchup, but I do think there is enough here where they should be the top stack. They're facing Austin Gomber, and Gomber is not what he was at times last year, where I actually, during stretches last year, wanted to use him as a pitcher. He's definitely come back to her. His strikeout rate is just 18% across nine starts. He has decent bad at ball numbers, but you need to be a bit better than where he's been to survive at Coors Field with a low strikeout rate. 
That's why Gomber's ERA is 5.51. We saw him let up eight earned runs last time out, and that game was on the road. He has pitched better at home for the most part, and there are some guys who just know how to pitch Coors Field. But I'm not sure if this will stick as the sample expands, especially when he's in a matchup as tough as this one, where he's facing the Braves with a 208 ISO against lefties, a 119 WRC plus. They are a powerful team with a bunch of lefty bashers. And now you're putting them in thin air. So I want to be in on the Braves, even as someone who does respect Gomber. I think that I think, you know, he's a good pitcher. I think that eventually things will iron themselves out and get back to where he was last year. But for now, very okay stacking this Braves team against him. It's been a pretty rough year for Ozzy Albies. He's been pushed down the batting order. His ISO is down about 70 points from where it was last year. So overall, downgrading him. But he's still hitting lefties well. He's always hit lefties well, but that's still been there this year. He has a 197 ISO against them with a 46% fly ball rate, almost no strikeouts. So Albies is always someone I tend to give a boost against lefties. I will still be doing that here. And I think that he gets a bigger bump than most with a left-hander on the mound. So Ozzy Albies, a guy who struggled so far this year, I do think there's enough, though, to still feel pretty good about him, and I do like Albies in this spot. Travis Darno, $3,300 if you want to save some salary. Adam Duvall, rough year, but he's $2,900. All those guys could be in play to make a Coors Field stack more affordable. I also do want to be in on the Rockies on the other side of this game. They're facing Ian Anderson, and the numbers say that Anderson has had bad luck. His expected ERA is 3.81, and his actual ERA is 4.34. So the expected ERA much better. But Anderson has similar issues to Gomber, where he's not getting enough strikeouts. His strikeout rate this year is 18%. He's not putting the ball in the zone enough to tempt people and to get strikeouts. His zone rate is 38%. And people just aren't chasing his stuff that much. And when he does put it in the zone, they're swinging at it, and they're making contact. So... He's putting himself in bad spots, Anderson is. It's led to an 11% walk rate. And on top of that, he's letting up a 41% hard, hard hit rate. The ground ball rate is fine, uh, but it's not big enough to overcome the issues that Anderson has had, at least not at Coors Field. Maybe if you were in a better park for pitchers, maybe, but not right now. Anderson is another young, talented guy. He should have uh, good enough stuff to live in the zone more and be okay, but he's not there yet. So until we see Anderson really figure out the way to best utilize his stuff, I will be okay stacking against him when he is at Coors Field, which is where he is at for tonight. The Rockies are a pretty righty-heavy lineup right now, which could be a concern against the righty, but that's actually not a bad thing against Anderson specifically. His strikeout rate against righties is 14% versus 23% against lefties. We also see Anderson with a lower ground ball rate against righties. So I will prioritize the righties here. And I think they make a lot of sense. Not saying I'm off of um, the, the two lefties uh, in, the, in the team, maybe three if Hilliard gets in there, but prioritizing the righties because of the situation they find themselves in here. I, I talked about Jonathan Daza as not being a guy I like earlier this week. I probably will have to be more flexible in that at $2,900, just given it's Coors Field, stuff like that. And I want high salary pitchers. So I will walk that back for tonight, at least, given the, the salary savings I will need. Now, if we're going to go hard at Coors Field, we need some value bats elsewhere. And I'm okay getting them via the Cincinnati Reds. They're facing Yoan Adon, and Adon did shut down Colorado last time out. But overall, the results are still lagging. His ERA is 6.08. He His expected ERA is right there at 6.09. We've seen Adon adjusting, where he threw a lot of curveballs as for three starts, but he's cut back on that across his past seven. But he hasn't quite turned the corner just yet. The one thing that Adon has done is keep hard contact in check. He's let up just a 33% hard hit rate in this time, which is lower than you would like it to be in terms of stacking against him. But the plate discipline numbers are bad enough to wash that out. 16% strikeout rate, 13% walk rate. Those are both pluses for this Reds offense. Now, the Reds did just lose Tyler Naquin. I think that's a pretty big downgrade to this team, and it puts their, their active roster, WRC Plus, against righties down to 80 so you have to be selective. Make sure you're not using duds when you're stacking this team. I would dig into their, their, their numbers against righties. Check out the fly ball rate. Check out the ISO. Check out the hard contact numbers. Make sure you're not using you know guys who aren't worthy of our rosters in, in DFS. 
but I think there's enough here to be okay with it. One of those guys, especially when I'm looking for value, is Joey Votto, because since he came off the COVID IL, Votto's been a different guy. He has a 361 ISO since he returned. Hard hit rate is 56%, 48% fly ball rate. His salary is $2,500. I think that Joey Votto is the best value of the night outside of maybe Adam Duvall. Um, but I think Votto probably going to go on a homer binge here pretty soon. It's a good ballpark for hitting homers. Uh, he's making the kind of contact that you want. So Votto, really rough start to the year, but since he came back, much different guy. And I'm okay with that for sure in DFS for tonight. Let's go to things to watch now at the top end of the pitching pool. I don't mind Tony Gonsolin. Just think he's a bit oversalaried. He's $9,800 facing the Mets, who are a low strikeout team. They have an 18% strikeout rate against righties this year. Gons- Gonsolin's been awesome. Um, he's been great. but And I was interested in him if he'd been a value play. Like, if you gave me Gonsolin as a value versus Wood, probably would have gone Gonsolin, but that's not the scenario for tonight. So um, a bit too high salary for my liking. I'm fine with him, but probably not super inclined to get their overall contra over Manaya and over Wood. If the rain does wind up clearing out in Baltimore, I would be okay stacking the Orioles. They're facing Chris Flexen, who lets up a lot of hard contact and a lot of fly balls. The Orioles, about league average against righties, so I'll have to keep tabs on the weather, but I can definitely see being high on them if we get the green light on the weather. Finally, I'm not sure what to do with the Cubs. They're facing Matthew Liberator, who is a really talented guy. He can get some strikeouts, but the question is, Will he be successful immediately? He might, um, because again, the talent is very good. I'm just not really sure. Like his numbers in AAA were good. And I think that that's a positive. And they don't have a huge book on him just yet. The Cubs can hit lefties pretty well, even without Seiya Suzuki. So I'm inclined to stack them here. I understand if you don't want to, given how good Lee Baratora could be long-term. But I think for me, I will give it a shot just because... I don't know. I think that I'm skeptical in general of guys coming up, and I think that's okay to be that. Hopefully the name value keeps roster rates on the Cubs lower. We'll see. But I do think that they're worth a look for tonight, despite the fact that Lee Verator are really, really good. Let's talk about some dinger calls for today. The boring one will be at Coors Field. I mentioned that uh, Anderson does struggle with right-handed batters, so I'll go CJ Crone being the dinger pick from the Rockies for today. Big fly ball, right? Big ISO against righties. Obviously a tremendous park for offense. So CJ Crow, my pick uh, for the boring one. For the fun one, if that Baltimore game does wind up playing, I want to go Anthony Santander. He is amazing. I have loved him for a very long time. He is putting the ball in the air a ton this year. His hard hit rate is very good. He does have nine home runs, so questionable if that counts as being a uh, fun home run call, but he's also 32, so it's a little bit higher than I like to go uh, for today. But, you know, if they play, I like Santander. If not, this one is more exotic because this guy has not hit a home run this year across AAA, across the majors. Clint Frazier is actually kind of interesting. He has been putting the ball in the air. He's traditionally hit lefties better than he's hit righties. He's facing Lee Baratour, who can put the uh, let up some fly balls, so... We'll see. Um, I'll go CJ Crone, Anthony Santander. And if we don't get Santander, I'll go with Clint Frazier. We'll see if that works out. Because again, no homers this year across AAA or the minors. But, you know, what are you going to do? That is all that we have here for today on the solo shot. If you're looking for a breakdown of the NBA Finals, we did have Drew Dinzik on covering the spread yesterday, breaking down his thoughts on Golden State versus Boston. Uh, You know, Drew from Twitter at, at whale underscore capper. We got his thoughts on when to bet the teams that you like. Uh, He has a good read on schedules, how odds will shift, stuff like that. I thought it was a tremendous conversation with him. Check it out on the Covering the Spread podcast feed if you're looking to get some bets down for the NBA Finals for tonight. Also, while you're there, don't forget to subscribe to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy podcast feed to get our USC, NASCAR, MLB, PGA podcast, eventually NFL back as well. All that good stuff in one place. Hit subscribe. If you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review. If you have any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Big thank you to everyone for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups. And we'll talk to you once again on Friday to close up a good week. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.